morning, friends. <laughs> you ever get a million pop-ups when you're first starting your live? That's what just happened. All right, anyway. Welcome. Good morning. Sorry, I am late. That was not how things were supposed to go. It was one of those mornings. Do you ever have one of those mornings where everyone decides they need you? That all kinds of urgent things pop up that weren't on your list. And so that was this morning for me. So it took me, what, 22 extra minutes to get out here? Oh, that's crazy. Thankfully, I'm out here with nobody. So hopefully it stays that way. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> all right, so we're talking about 10 truths to trust. Try to say that five times fast. 10 truths to trust because there are so many things that the Word says that we say we believe, but our actions prove us wrong. Yesterday, we dove into our first truth. So yes, if you're counting, that probably will take us two weeks because we're 9 a.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday. You can count on us except for today. It's 9.22. All right. Anyway, we won't go there. But thanks for joining me. So yesterday, we hit our first one, and it was good. And I'm not going to tell you about it. You're going to have to go back and watch it. If you missed it, watch it. It's a truth that will transform you if we put action to it, if we truly believe it. Erica, thanks for joining me, even though I'm super late. I got to stop bringing that up because people are going to watch this all day and now everyone's going to know that I'm late. So I probably should stop saying that this broadcast started late. Anyway, today, 10 truths. Well, we're probably only going to get to one. But the next truth to trust is this one. I got Romans 5, 7. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. That can be a confusing verse for some, but let me unpack this for you. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one. Who's that talking about? Adam. Adam didn't do right. He went for common sense. He went for peer pressure. He let other people decide what was best for him that was opposite of what God had asked him to do. And I found it real interesting that because God had spoke to Adam that it's counted as Adam's sin. God didn't speak that to Eve that we have record of. He spoke it to Adam. And so because of Adam's trespass, Adam's offense, Adam's sin, death reigned by him. And we're real accustomed to letting death reign in our lives. Even in Christianity. Oh, God needed that one for his garden. That God took that one home early. He must have his reasons. God's not in death. He's in life. <laughs> no, no, got an ant crawling on me. God is life, not death. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. God come, Jesus came, that we may have life and life to the full. So, death in any limited fashion should not have any part in any Christian's life. All the way down to sickness, to a cold, to sniffles, to allergies. That has no right. What is it doing? It's stealing. It's stealing your health. It's stealing your ability to be around uh, people that God wants to speak through. And God wants to speak through you into their lives. And it's all little bits of death working you down a path to get you to um, leave this earth prematurely. That is not God's plan. Ever. No. It says, with long life will I satisfy him. That's God's words. Not, well, you know, I don't have enough people in heaven, so I got to cut come back and start killing people off on the earth. No! Where do we get these things? 
That's what we picture him as doing. That's what I, people say things, not that extreme, but they say things like that. When you're standing around at a funeral, what in the world? What kind of evil, horrible, heartless God would that be? Well, he has his reasons. He's God. I'm not. It's the wrong God. It's the wrong one. That is not Yahweh God. So, that's what we're talking about today. I know, I got off on a tangent. These verses are so packed of truths, it's ridiculous. That's just the honest truth. There's so many truths in the Word that we're not speaking, that we're not believing, that we are not living out. So, if, if we are living in that experience where we have little bits of death at work in our life. Well, it's not that bad. I can live with it. I can deal with it. Why? Do we see Jesus doing that? Well, they're, they're, only, a, they're only a little sick. They're only kind of sick. They, they've lived 12 years with this blood disease. I'm sure they'll be just fine. No. Not at all. That's never how he reacted. So we have to react the same way. So anyway, I went back into it. For by one man's offense, death reigned by one. Much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. God's plan through Jesus is that we would reign. Uh, The Amplified Classic Version puts it even a little different. And the I'm going to pick up in the middle so I don't get sucked back into that other truth that we're not going to talk about today. Uh, Much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace, His unmerited favor, and the free gift of righteousness, putting them back into right standing with Himself, reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. You were created the moment you received Christ, the moment you took on His righteousness, that free gift of righteousness. What does it say next? And and the free gift of righteousness reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. We're supposed to reign as kings. Now I know girls out there watching this, that is not mean that... uh, This is only for men. Just so you guys know, it says reign as kings, and if I can be the bride of Christ, you can be a king. Deal? Deal. There's a lot of things in the Word where, uh, compared to God's manliness, Jesus' manliness, I'm a bride. (laughs) That's the truth. I'm His bride that He's coming back for, and I'm glad for that. Now, it's your turn. That's coming up. Right now, in this life, you're to reign as a king. As the ultimate authority in the land. That's what a king is, right? The ultimate authority. That's why Jesus says, I don't have this verse written down, but whatever you bind in heaven or on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. That we reign as kings as the ultimate authority in this land. And before you get all braggadocious on that, it's through the one man, Jesus Christ. It's through our surrender to Him, saying what He says, doing what He does, that we reign in this life as a king. Because He's king. He's king of kings and Lord of lords. And He's living in you, looking for you to release Him as a mighty king. And what is that going to look like? It's going to look like actions of a king. It's going to look like verbiage of a king where we don't plead, we don't beg, we don't ask the enemy to line up with God's plans. No, we command. We forcefully advance on the kingdom of darkness. That is God's plan for you Now, now let me clarify. When it says reigning as kings in life, there's one area that God never says we're supposed to uh, subdue. 
One area we're not supposed to have dominion over. Do you know that? Put it in the comments. Can you think of what that might be? What do you think that might be? All right, I'm just going to tell you, I can't wait. I, I'm, I'm excited about this. It's over other people. No. Look at Adam and Eve. He gave them dominion over all the earth and the fish of the sea and the bird of the air and all the plants and the trees, right? He did all of that. Guess what we've been restored to? That pre-Adamic state. So we're back to ruling over all of the earth, over all the animals, the fish of the sea, the bird of the air, the plants. As you know, side note, so I've been studying this out for some things we're, we're, gonna, we're diving into. I'm really excited about um, that the Bible says that the land that you own is blessed once you make it fruitful. Did you know that? As soon as you make the ground fruitful around your house, where it begins producing for you, then God's blessing automatically is applied to your property. How cool is that? Go plant something that grows and feeds you. Tomato plant, asparagus, orange tree, whatever, wherever you're at. Do it. It's, it's going to open the door for God's blessing to be on your land. Another side note, I had somebody who was at our house this last uh, yesterday. And they're like, man, I just, God's presence is all over your property here. I see like even angelic um, all over your property. And you know what a big part of that is? One, we're Christians. It's our dominion. So it's obvious that kingdom of heaven realities would be there. But two, we've planted things that grow for us, produce food for us all over our property. It's blessed. It's kingdom. That's not also not where we're going today. We're going to reign in life as kings. You know what else that is over? All the principalities, all the authorities, all the rulers in this dark world. We have complete dominion over them. I'm I'm talking about Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 through 13. If you're not sure, it's right before the armor of God uh, verses, right? It says that we have authority over them, that we should command them, just like Jesus did. You don't see Jesus ever saying, well, you know, this city's really dark and this city's been, you know, there's a lot of demonic activity in this city. And so, uh, yeah, I just can't do much here. Nope. He never said that. You know what he did say? Because of their unbelief, he could do no great works there. Why? Because he would not take dominion over people. He took dominion over the principalities, over the powers of authorities of this dark world, but not over people. So their unbelief blocked Jesus from doing great works there. That's mind-blowing right there. The King of Kings, Lord of Lords, would not take dominion over people to that level where he could not do, it's not even would not, he could not do any great works there. Why? Because he lost his his power be, it's like if uh, it's not people would equate that to, oh, what's the movie Elf, where you got the Christmas spirit is low, so they had to put the jet pack on the the sleigh, and then the sleigh crashes because there wasn't enough Christmas spirit, and then they get everybody to sing in the park, and that boosts the Christmas spirit, and now now he's able to fly his his uh, sleigh and deliver presents, and we see Jesus that way, we see God that way. That is not it. Their unbelief restricted them from opening the door for him to do his work in their lives. Their own unbelief blocked them from receiving. And that's exactly what we're talking about. These 10 truths to trust are things that we've let unbelief reign in our life and then we wonder why God's power is blocked in our life, why we're living so far less than what we see in the, in the promises in the Word, the things that the Holy Spirit's been speaking to us. Why are we living so far under? Oh, well, you know, just, we'll step into it someday. You know, someday, somehow, something supernatural is going to happen for me, but not in me or through me, just to me. It's so, so wrong. That is not a life connected 
with Christ. No, that's a life absence with the power and authority of Christ. And you're hoping that someday somebody else will take authority over what you have dominion over except for one thing. We have dominion over the earth, the fish of the sea, the bird of the air, the plants, the trees, over the enemy. I don't have authority over you. I don't have authority over your life. And so you can see in the Word that people, when they have asked, uh, were set free. People would come to Him, help me in my unbelief, right? Uh, But Jesus said that, you know, if they didn't um, fill themselves up with Him, put their hearts and their minds on Christ, begin to live for Him, serve Him, it doesn't turn out better for them. Why? Because they're not taking their authority. They're not choosing to rule and reign in this life. And so what does that mean? Does that mean every one of us has to be a CEO of our own company making multi-trillion dollars of, of profit every single year? No. You're supposed to know what God wants you to do. And in that area, you rule, you reign in that sphere of influence. Doesn't mean you have to be the leader of the group. It doesn't ma- matter if you have the uh, X amount of letters after your title uh, CEO, COO, blah, 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 PhD, blah, whatever, DM. That's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is that when it's needed, we don't beg, we don't plead, we don't wish, we don't hope, world's kind of hope. We command. We command things to change. Look at what Jesus did. The Bible says, Jesus lived as our example. He didn't beg. He didn't plead. With a word, He drove out demons. One word. It's not by lots of lots of words and saying the right thing and making sure that you're calling them out by name and that you're, you're identifying them. And, and No. It's not that at all. Jesus was our example. He was not showing us an example of how powerful God is. He was showing us how we can live in this world when we surrender to Him. And so He could drive out demons with a word. And so some of you, I know, you're thinking, oh, demons, well, that's like third world country stuff. I'd have to go there. No. There's people struggling with the demonic right in your own city. Right probably on your own street. How do you know? How would I recognize them? Ask the Holy Spirit. Ask God. He's the one that you're supposed to be leading or following. Not me. I'm not supposed to be leading you. I can help guide you, but if you keep coming to me for the answers for everything, you're missing the relationship with God that He wants you to have. Yes, you can learn and grow through me, but if you depend on a person, that person's always going to let you down. If you depend on him, he is always faithful. And he wants to reign in this world through you. So what does that look like when you come up against an issue? You approach it like a king, as the ultimate authority in the land over that circumstance, that situation, right? Sickness tries to come in. You take it on as the ultimate authority in that land. There's a, there's a um, vote for, for a political vote. What do you do? You can't take dominion over people, but you can command the rulers, authorities, principalities of this dark world. You command them into confusion. You command them into uh, a cease and desist order. And watch how things crumble when we take the authority and we begin saying what Jesus would say, because guess what? He's in you. Oh my word, it's time for us to rule and reign in life 
as kings, as the ultimate authority in the land. And then 1 John chapter 4 takes it one step further. This is mind-blowing. This is still tough for me to wrap my head around. And so I'm still working on this truth. But it doesn't mean it's any less the truth just because I'm struggling to believe it. It it is the truth even though my head has not been transformed fully yet to respond with what is common sense to this reality. 1 John 4.17 By this, love is perfected with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. Because as He is, so also are we in this world. As God is, as Jesus is, so also are we in this world. What does that mean? Our lives should be marked by the supernatural. Not slightly better natural than the unsaved. I, we, we cop out at that, well, I'm living a little bit better than you know these people, so, so yeah, I'm doing good. If your life is not marked by the supernatural, you're not living out this verse. Because as He is, so also are we in this world. Do you see Jesus living just slightly better than you know, the, the others around Him? He was, he was like a little better than the Pharisees, a little nicer than, than the Pharisees, and so that was good enough. No. He lived such a unique, supernatural life that even those that didn't know God, weren't following God, were drawn to Him. Look at who His followers were. Look who, He said, even the the tax collectors and the prostitutes are coming to God before you. Why? Even the unsaved, even those that did not believe in God, recognized Holy moly, this guy is walking in some supernatural power. I got to find out what that is. I got to follow this guy. I got to learn. I got to step into this. That's how our lives should be. Not that after 20 years of doing relationship with someone, you finally reveal that you're a Christian and you ask to pray for their great aunt's cousin's wife's dog. And hopefully maybe it'll be get better eventually, but you never really know because they're so far removed. So, you know, but I'm a Christian. I'm a good Christian. We have to get to the place 